Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Today's video is going to be an intro into weapon making. We're going to create a very simple weapon that you can pick up, and when you attack another player with it, they take some damage. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look. So for a weapon, it's nothing fancy, just a big stick. And we can take our big stick and whack another player. And when we do, it does damage to them. Alright, let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so for this project, we're just going to be creating a very simple weapon. To do that, we're just going to insert a cylinder part into the game. And what you can do at this point is just resize it to whatever shape you want. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer and a little bit skinnier. What we're going to do next is we're going to go up to the workspace here and add a tool. And then we're going to take our part and rename it. And we're going to rename it to Handle. And then once we have that, we're going to move our handle part into the tool. There's some properties under the tool that we're going to change, but before we do that, let's just go and take a look at it and see how it picks it up. Okay, so I'm just going to walk over to the part so the player picks it up. Okay, and I can see my player picked it up, but he picked it up from the middle of the part. So let's go and take a look and see how we can fix that. So under the tool's properties here, there's an appearance section. And the first part we're going to look at is the grip forward section. And to change this from a horizontal to a vertical, what we're going to do is change it from the Z position to the Y position. So let's go ahead and put a 1 here and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to have my player pick up the tool again. Okay, so it looks like we're getting closer. We moved it from a horizontal position to a vertical position. But let's go ahead and move the part up so it looks like he's gripping it toward the bottom. We're going to go back to the tool's properties, and this time under the appearance section, we're going to look at grip position. And there's three sets of numbers here, an X, a Y, and a Z. If you're not sure which one to change, just go ahead and pick one and put the number 1 and see what happens. So let's go ahead and try Z, and I'm going to put a 1 here. And let's go ahead and run the game and see how he picks it up now. Okay, I'm going to have my player go over to pick up the tool. And I see that it moved it from the player's hand a little bit to the right. So I know that the Z position is not the correct way to change it. This time, let's try the X. So I'm going to put the 1 instead of in the Z position. I'm going to put it in the X and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it shifted the grip position up on the part. So at least I know I have the right value now. I'm just going in the wrong direction. So instead of positive 1, let's try a negative number. So instead of 1 here, I'm going to try negative 3 and see how that looks. Okay, and that looks pretty good. The player is gripping the part near the bottom of the stick. So once you have that figured out, you can add a script under the tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the script that I have on the other part. What we're doing first is we're creating a variable as a reference for the tool. We're also making a variable called can damage and setting that equal to false at the beginning. And then in the script we have two different functions and two different events. The first one is a tool activation which happens when the player has the tool in their hand and they click on the mouse. The other one is a touch event with the handle part of the tool. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function right here first. This function does two different things. The first thing it does, it plays a slash animation. And the other thing it does, it sets can damage equal to true. This other function runs whenever the handle touches something. And what we're doing first is we're using this other part parameter. So this is whatever other part touches the handle. And we're checking the other part's parent to see if it has a humanoid. Basically, we're just checking to see if the stick hits another player. This next line says if it hits something other than a player, we're just going to cancel the function. The next part is making sure that the humanoid parent is not equal to the tool parent. The reason we're doing that is to make sure that we don't damage the player that's holding the weapon. So if that happens and can damage is equal to true, then what we're going to do is we're going to say humanoid colon take damage to cause the other player to take 5 points of damage. Okay, so just a quick recap. The main purpose of this function out here is to play the slash animation and also allow us to damage the other player. And this function up here is checking to see what other part touches the handle. It makes sure that it's touching another player and then it damages that player. If you want to increase or decrease the damage amount, then you can change this number right here. So if you want to do more damage with each swing of the weapon, you can change this to a bigger number. If you want to do less damage, then change it to a smaller number. Alright, and before we end with this video, if you want to add a dummy into it to test with, what you can do is head under Plugins and press Build a Rig. And then I just chose the Mesh Rig. 
and now you have a little dummy character that you can test out your weapon on. This video was just meant to be a basic introduction into weapons. Let me know in the comments though what you would like to do with this. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. <laughs>